Right, I want to show you my new Super 8 camera acquisition. What the hell is this? Ugh, it's heavy, it is ugly, it is lumpy, it is boxy, it is chunky, and it's very, very plastic. It is the Sankyo ES44XL VAF autofocus, the very first autofocus Super 8 camera on the market, 1978. A lot came out in 1979, can't find anything 1977 or earlier, and some guy on the internet has confirmed that this is the first autofocus Super 8 camera that was mass marketed. And that is the reason for this horrible chunky box thing on top here. This is the VAF, the Visitronic Autofocus System. Not only is it chunky and ugly, it is noisy. I'll show you what I mean. If I switch the autofocus on here, press this green button, that activates just the autofocus. And listen to this. It makes that chugging noise, whether it's focusing or not. It actually does a fairly good job of autofocusing. Hand in front. Boom, away. So it does work. Um, <laughs> of course, it's also got horrifically noisy power zoom. Let's go. Oh, sweet music. And zoom out, zoom in. And of course the motor runs. So when we combine all three of those, let's put the autofocus on. Now on this, you'll be able to hear the autofocus actually clicks in like a second after you uh, pull the trigger and before the motor starts running, which is quite smart. It does a little bit of autofocusing just before it actually starts burning up film. So listen, so autofocus, motor, and then a bit of zooming. And this is why I didn't do this film. I didn't show you this in the other room because there's a building sign next door and I don't want them to complain about the noise. Anyway, other than it being chunky and uh, a bit ugly, it actually has a fairly decent set of features. Just beside the usual 85 filter, it's got 18 frames a second, nine frames a second, and of course single frame, which is great. Great fun for animation. It's also got something interesting on the other side. There we go, it has this button for 36 frames a second, which obviously if you're shooting and you wanna capture a, uh, your kid jumping into the pool or whatever it is in slow motion while it's filming, you can just push that down at any time. There you go, if you wanna burn up film even faster. Uh, it's got auto iris as well. There we go, auto or manual iris. What else? It's got a uh, funny little on off switch here. Fair enough. And it's got this green button here, which if you press it, it's the battery check. It also has this electronic system accessory and flash sync. So um, in theory, although this is a silent camera, you might be able to sync up a tape recorder with it. I'm never gonna be able to do that. Um, or you can probably, uh, attach it to an intervalometer and do a bit of time-lapse. And finally, I discovered this almost by accident, if you press in the button, <gasps> hidden feature, it's got macro. You can film macro with it as well. So all in all, it's got a pretty good set of features, the, uh, the Sankyo, despite it being uh, ugly as sin. Um, unfortunately, the little uh, Sankyo uh, badge is, uh, has dropped off. I've found that a lot in these Super 8 cameras, that the, the, the name badges just drop off, which doesn't fill you with much confidence. But I've shot a roll of film in it, and I'm going to develop it now. How am I going to develop it? Well, I've got another new toy to show you. Straight from the USSR via Time Machine and eBay. Yes, it's a new Lomo tank. Well, not new. Uh, <laughs> it's several years old. New for me, 
Well, I've got a Lomo tank already, you're thinking, and you've already made a film about your Lomo tank, but that was a 25 foot Lomo tank, and this one will take the full 50 feet of Super 8. Not only that, it will take two rolls of Super 8 in one. It's a double decker, and with the addition of various spacers, I can also develop 50 feet of 60 millimeter or even 35 millimeter. Should I go completely crazy and buy a 35 millimeter film camera and decide to develop short runs of 35 mil myself? Now, before I start loading this thing up and developing uh, the film I've shot on the Sankyo, what I really want to do is to work out exactly how much fluid I need to put into here. And this is going to be a kind of annoying because I'll have to completely dry the thing out before I can actually start developing. But this is data I need to know. I need to know so I don't mix excess chemicals. So I'm going to fill this with water and I'm going to see how much it takes to cover the first reel and uh, two reels. Okay, so there's one reel in there now. So let's start pouring it in. Right, that is all safely covered and even if I spin it around a bit it's still covered in fluid and that was 1.2 liters of water so I really only have to make 1.2 liters of developer fixer and all the rest of it for one spool right now I've got both spools on there so let's see how much fluid I'm gonna need if I want to develop two whole rolls of super 8 at once Right, that's 1.8 litres, and that's pretty much covered the whole thing. Although to be really safe, it's probably best to do one and a half for one spool, and two litres for two spools. All right, now I'm gonna dry this out and load it up with the roller film that I've shot on the Sankyo. Right, so the film loaded onto the spiral okay, but it all got a bit unspooled at the end and I made the mistake of taking the top off the spiral whereupon it all started falling out of the grooves very badly and for the last couple of stages in particular the fixing stage the film was sticking to itself and the fixer didn't get to every part of the film that's why some of it fixed okay so other parts have very very low contrast anyway on with the film so we start off with some 70 frames per second bolia footage. I want to check out the uh, the, the high speed um, function on the bolia, and it works pretty well. So I thought the trampolining footage here was quite a nice way to test the slow motion, uh, despite the horrific reversal developing job that I did on it. Even for me, it's pretty low quality development. Horrible marks bits of dust because once again while it was drying it fell off the drying rack and fell on the floor um, <laughs> also I processed it in caffeinol and I reversed I bleached and reversed it as well with a sodium bisulfate and permanganate by the way if you use the permanganate bleach and you use sodium metabisulfite as a clearing bath uh, when you're done you can get this quite cool effect by pouring the clearing bath liquid into the permanganate and it all just disappears like magic. The problem with doing this is that it also emits some kind of horrendous gas, so you have to dispose of the liquid pretty quickly before you get poisoned. So the Sankyo autofocus. The autofocus seems to work. I didn't touch the focus once during the rest of this film, and it does seem to have got a nice clear image here. The Sankyo works, the Bolia works, the Lomo tank works. I just need to concentrate a bit more on my developing technique. Here I am testing it, looking out and then into a train that I was on. And I, since I discovered it had the macro setting, I did that nice kind of focus pull where it starts off with drops of rain on the train window and then focused, pulled focused out to the, the outside and then back. Um, sometimes some nice solarization comes up. Again, autofocus, embarrassed daughter there. Not sure what happened here. I think 
the developer didn't even get to it or something something went kind of wrong. I was uh, doing a macro of stirring a cup of tea. A little bit of single frame animation here, a uh, TV screen, and lastly just to run out the film, a cat. Which, funnily enough, uh, this was the part of the film that got unspooled and uh, it fixed up pretty well. So, one last thing. On the 23rd of June, I shall be doing a Super 8 workshop where I'll be using all my equipment and know-how and cameras and different developers and bleachers and fixers with a small group of people. It's going to be great fun. It's in London on uh, the 23rd of June. So go to bluntproductions.com, sign up for that if you like the idea. When you consider that buying a roll of Super 8 and shooting it and getting it developed nowadays will cost you in the region of £60. My workshop comes in way below that and I supply all film and all processing so and you get to see it on the same day so it's a no-brainer come along to the workshop. And uh, that's about it for now I shall uh, be back with more experiments at a later date. Thank you for watching, subscribe and all the rest of it.